Okay, welcome to part one of this week's tutorial. Um, in this video I'm going to explain the database and folder structures and then hopefully code the init file and some of the backend functions, shortening functions file. Um, it's quite a lot to get through so let's just get started. I'm going to start with the folder structure. Um, I'm not sure if you saw in the previous tutorial but I have these two pages, uh, shorten and go. Uh, the shortened page is the one that I had open a minute ago. It has a form that with a shortened button, fairly standard, just a HTML form. The Go file has no um, HTML code at all. It's just a pure PHP file. See, it has no output. Um, both of these files are completely blank. Well, no. Um, the shortened file um, has this form code, the HTML code for the form. Um, the folder structure I'm using is the same as I always use. Um, in the root of the system, uh, we have these two pages, and then in this core folder, we have an init file, and then in this ink folder, which is inside the core folder, we have any backend files uh, that we're going to be using. In this case, we have shortener.ink.php. Um, this that file is just going to contain three functions that are going to be dealing with our system. Uh, okay. Oh, I suppose I should quickly say, uh, I'm planning to create an API tutorial um, which will use this code. So if you're getting bored of me so far, uh, stick with it if you're going to be interested in the API tutorial which will follow next week. So, right, uh, on to the database. Um, the database is, well, I've already I've got phpMyAdmin open as always in my other tab. Um, I've already created an empty database with no tables and we're just going to create the table that we're going to use um, for the system. Um, we are going to call this table URLs. I'm just going to give it two fields. Those fields are going to be URL key and URL. The URL key is going to be a varchar length 8. The um, URL itself is going to be a varchar as well length 1024. Um, just because that's a lot, it's like a large number, um, people probably won't be able to get a URL that long, but let's see. Um, um, the only other thing we need to do is change the URL key index to primary. Uh, we're not setting auto increment because this is not going to be an auto incrementing thing. It's going to be something that we're going to work out ourselves and store. So that's the database set up. Uh, we're just going to hit save, and you see the database has been created. So we're going to start our URL keys we're going to generate here, and our URLs here. Okay, so uh, the next thing we need to do is start coding the init file. This is going to be a very similar structure to, as always, with this type of file. Um, the first thing we need to do is open the database connection, which we do using the MySQL connect function. Uh, takes three parameters, the server name, the username, and the password. The username I have set up, as always, again, is example user, and the password is example pass. And then we need to tell the database server which um, database we want to be working with, which we do by spelling select right, like so. And if you recall from PHP my admin, the database was called URL shortener, except shortener, I think. Anyway, let's just check. Yep. Okay, so that's that done. Uh, the next thing we want to do is include our backend files. Um, so we're going to define this path variable as the path to the current folder that this actual init file is in. Uh, and that is contained in the file constant. Two underscores there. Two, un two underscores, capitals file, underscores again. Uh, and what that'll do is out there. Uh, that will contain this path variable will now contain the full server path to this core folder so we can use this to include things here which is sort of a nice thing to do so you don't have to worry about relative paths when you're including the init file <coughs> from other pages that is excuse me okay so uh, finally in this file we just want to include the single library file which we're going to do because it's in the core folder and it's slash ink slash Shorten uh, dot oh dear, shorten uh, dot ink dot php, and if you recall, that was the file I showed you in this ink folder. Hopefully, I've spelled the name right. Find out in a minute. Okay, so that's it for this backend file. 
what we're going to do now is include this in the shorten PHP page and the go.php page. Um, we do this in, well I've done this in every other tutorial so um, if you start from my first few videos I probably will explain it a little bit more in detail there if you're not following what I'm going, I go, what I'm doing at the moment. So what we do is just include this file. I also have a basics video on including files so you should probably watch that if you're not sure what include does. Uh, so we're including the file, the file is core slash init dot ink dot php. Uh, I'm just going to copy this and stick it on the go page as well. Okay, so now we can open up our browser page and test this out. So uh, just make sure I've re make sure I've saved the file, which I have. So if we browse to the shorten.php file, oh, we see I've spelt my username wrong or password wrong or something. So let's just uh, go to the init file and see why that is. Uh, what am I doing? All right, init. Uh, yeah, that should be pass. No not what it was. <laughs> you see now we're connecting to the database and the files obviously being included because it caused those errors a moment ago. <coughs> okay so uh, the next thing we need to do is create the um, sort of back-end file. Um, so we're going to do that it's being included here uh, and it's basically this file. And what this file is going to do is define three functions that we are then going to use in our pages as usual. So uh, I'm just going to write out the three functions first. Um, these functions are going to be um, sort of one that gets the total number of URLs in the ta in the table currently, one that gets a URL given a key, and one that adds a new URL and returns the key. So um, let's just create these new functions. Function get total URLs. This is just going to do. Not going to take any parameters. Uh, I'll just comment it gets the total number of URLs in the table number number uh, okay so that function will return the number of rows basically in the table uh, which we'll do using the MySQL count function um, the next one thing the next function we'll do is um, to get the URL given the key for the go page so I'm just going to say comment this gets the URL for the given key, and this function is just going to be called um, get URL. Uh, it's going to take one parameter, which is going to be the URL key. The final function is going to add a new new URL to the database if it doesn't ex already exist. If it does exist, it will just return the key of the one that's already in the table. If it doesn't, it'll add a new row and return that key. So let's just comment that as well. Um, adds a new URL to the table, returning its key, like so. Um, so let's just call that function um, shorten URL. Obviously that needs to take one parameter, which is the URL to be shortened. Okay, so that's it for function definitions, um, at least of the sort of core functions. So we're going to uh, do these, uh, work on these top two um, first, at least. So the get total URLs function. Um, you obviously, the reason we're doing this on a separate function is because we could incorporate this. Because at the moment, for this script, the only place it's used is in the short URL function. But we're doing this because you may want to display statistics information on this. Uh, like say, you might want to say on the home page we have X URLs shortened. Um, so yeah, that's an, an example use for it. Um, so this function is going to do a simple MySQL query and then just return the result of that. So we're going to store the um, result of the query, MySQL result, in this total variable. Uh, and the query itself is going to be simple select count URL key oops, from URLs. And what that will do is just return the total number of rows um, in the URLs table. And then we just want to return that result um, as a number, so let's just return because by default the MySQL result function which we're going to use in a moment will return a string, so we just want to cast it to an int because that's what it is. It's an integer number of rows, you can't have half a row or any fraction of a row. Um, so we're just going to cast to an int the MySQL result 
of the total query and the first row. Just bring that down the line so it looks a bit neater. So what we're doing here is getting the number of rows and then returning it with, uh, as a number. So we can check that uh, just by going to our shortened page and adding, um, I'll just do it here actually, echo get total URLs. If we reload our page now, you see we get zero because obviously there are no rows in the table. Just log in again. No, no rows in the table, empty, empty result, uh, so we get zero. Um, so just remove that. Uh, okay, so the next thing we want to do is define the get URL function. Um, and what we need to do here is, as well as checking, as well as getting the URL, we also want to return false if the URL doesn't exist, because then we can use that to show a message like this URL may have been removed or whatever. Um, the first thing we have to need to do is escape uh, this. So we'll do, do that using the MySQL real escape string. We always want to do this for any input that comes from the uh, user um, to prevent SQL injection, which I have a basics. No, I have a security video on, so go and watch that if you're not sure why I'm using this function here. So let's do that URL key. Whoops, don't want to highlight it. Um, and then we want to do a, another simple query, um, which we're going to put the results of that in this variable, which we call results, just for no reason, really. That's the MySQL query and the query is going to be select URL URL from URLs where URL key key equals something and that something is going to be the URL key that they entered and then from this we want to return false if there are no rows returned um, and the result if there is one row returned. So we're going to use the ternary operator, which I also have a basics video on. Uh, I think it's called logic or something like that. So we're going to return something and the something is going to be a condition. Uh, and that condition is going to be mysql num rows result, which will just get the number of rows that, that result returns. And then if it's equal to one, oops, what we want to do, well, if it's equal to one, we want to return the number of the results. So we can do MySQL result uh, result query and the first row. Um, if it's not equal to one, so if it's zero, pretty much that means because the URL key has to be unique. If it's not equal to one, it's going to return false, like so. Uh, so that's that function done. So what's going on here? Just quickly explain is that this condition is being checked. If that condition comes out as true, we're returning this. Otherwise, we're returning this. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, the shorten URL function I will explain in the next part, um, and hopefully I'll get through creating both of the pages. Okay, so thank you for watching, and join me in part two, where we will finish this file and code the two pages, as well as testing it out and probably finding out um, that I've made quite a few errors. Uh, we can test it just for syntax by just reloading the page, see if we get no errors, which means at least in terms of syntax, this file is correct. Okay, so thank you for watching, and join me in part two.